Coogan Cassie Seifel TV here in Brayhead for He Who Dares. We've now got promoter Eddie Hearn. Oh, bitterly disappointing for Ricky Burns tonight, Eddie. Yeah, absolutely gutted. He's absolutely devastated, probably more so than, than he was against Crawford because of the sacrifice he's made, the changes he's made. I mind that, it's going to knock you out. Oh. Um, I just, you know, it's difficult to, to take the changes that Tony's made into 10 weeks of a camp. And he made the same fundamental mistakes that he did against Beltran and, you know, leaving himself and his chin open when he's when he's trading and, and the first round was a complete nightmare. Couldn't have been much worse. Um, and I think it took him three or four rounds to recover and get back and he continued to take shots. And then I thought he boxed okay in spurts. You know, I thought that he certainly won the, the last six rounds of the fight, or the, the sorry, the, the second half of the fight, not all six rounds. Uh, but it's a crushing blow, mate, because obviously if you're going to win world titles and you're going to fight for world titles, you've got to be winning at that level, you know. Listen, hats off to Zlatican, but you've got to be beating him if, if you're going to go. Did you feel like you needed to put him in with someone of this you've level got, at the very minimum? Yeah, because what, yeah. you know, you've got two options. You can either have a complete gimme fight and then move on to Zlatican, which, you know, there's an argument for that. But Ricky Burns, you know, what are you going to do? Put him in an eight or ten rounder? I mean, it's like... He's, you know, he's had 40 fights. He's, you know, he feels as though he's at that level. And to be honest with you, he looked great in the gym. He looked great in sparring. He looked so fresh, even tonight in the changing rooms. And then, he, you know, he went back to himself early on. And, you know, second half of the fight, better off the ropes, listening to Tony, moved his feet well, jabbed nicely, doubled up the jab. But again, every time he has a trade up, he throws a wide left hook and leaves his chin in the air. And Zlatican had, you know, all he was doing was, was the big overhand left hook or the big overhand right hand. And rather than defending them, which he was doing when he wasn't throwing, when he was throwing, that's when he was getting caught. And that was the eye-catching shots. Didn't score the fight. I thought I didn't have a clue when the final bell went. Gut feeling was that Dejan had won it. And he got the decision, you know. Um, do you think he'd be willing to drop down to the domestic level? I think so because he's got the desire and he wants to learn and he wants to improve and you know he's he's in tears right now um, and he's just you know, I can't tell you how heartbreaking it is when you go back to a change room and the fighters crying saying they've let everyone down. I mean I said to him, let everyone, you're the one who goes in there and takes shots. You're the one who sacrifices time away from your family to do what you do. You not let nobody down at all. But the other thing he said was, I've just got to go back to the gym and improve, you know, and that's not the words of a man who's thinking about jacking it in. And, you know, there is big domestic fights out there to be made, but I think maybe you go on the road now, you know, or you fight at, you know, a neutral venue, if you like, and you, you, you know, he's had so many fights in Glasgow, you know, for us, he's had four fights in, I don't know, 18 months, all in Glasgow, all headlining, you know. And, um, you know, maybe it's time to get on a road and, and, and have a domestic challenge and see how he feels after that. But there's loads of opportunities out there for him, but it's all about in here what's burning. You know, when you wake up to go to work and you, you just don't want to get out of bed and go, that's when it's time to either quit or look for a new job. What do you think about the impacts of the change of trainer has had on tonight? I mean, bits and pieces he improved on, but again, it was the worst start. You know, Tony told him, don't go out there and try, have a trade up off your jab, Bob, and the first thing he'd done in the first 20 seconds was go out, throw a one-two, left hook, right hand, bang, and that, that was it. And it was like, this is the worst start you could possibly imagine. Um, and then from there, it was you're playing catch up. You know, he lost the next couple of rounds, I felt. Probably after four rounds, he's three or four points down. And, um, you know, again, he won a lot of the back end of the rounds, but by then it was too late, and it could have. I feel like he could have got it, but my gut feeling was that, that Zlatican, you know, deserve the win. No one's really had a chance to talk to Ricky, obviously, of, after what's happened, but uh, what's he said to you? He's absolutely devastated, mate. He's in tears. He don't want to talk to anyone. He spent 11 weeks away from his, his missus and his son travelling down to Essex to, 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 to improve and to get his career back on track. And it hasn't, and it hasn't worked. And it's heartbreaking. He, he's, he's probably twice as devastated as he was when he beat Crawford because I think when he beat Crawford, he felt like I was beaten by a quality fighter. Tonight, he knew he should be beating people like that. And I think take that first round away, and he probably would have. But again, his performance still, it wasn't the performance that says, I'm ready to win world titles again.
you know what I mean? Mm. Tonight, he wouldn't have beat Figueroa, he wouldn't have beat Vasquez, he wouldn't have beat Abra, because their level's above Zlatican. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the heartbreaking thing, is that he hasn't won at that level, probably due to the start that he had. What does this mean for Scottish boxing in general in relation to matching sport and yourself after well, tonight? Listen, we're still here, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not leaving. Stephen Simmons won tonight, he's got great support. Willie Lemon won the British and Commonwealth title. You know, Scott Harrison's talking about a comeback. So there's, there's still, but we've got to do what's right for Ricky Burns, not just what's right for Scottish boxing. And he'll go and have a holiday now and he'll, he'll, you know, he'll decide his future. And listen, he may turn around and say, listen, I've won world titles at two weights. Um, I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to do it anymore. In which case you'd have to say, 100% respect your decision. But when someone's got the desire, they've got the freshness, they still look good in a the gym. They've still, you know, it's difficult to walk away. But it's all about what you want, out of, you know. Wally Camacho a round away from winning that fight, wasn't it? Because he was yeah, up on the scorecards. Fight, yeah, it? I mean, it was quite a poor fight for the first half. Um, I felt like Wally could have actually done more. That left hand looping Bolo, he's throwing to the body, was was hurting Simmons. But si what Simmons did from the ninth round, he should have done from the fourth or fifth round. I think he might have finished it earlier. But listen, you know, it was a, it was a good scrap and, and fair play to Simmons. You know, he's, he's, he wants to make a statement in the cruiserweight division. He can go on for big fights now. Mm. You know, what he's got to rebuild. Mm. But again, you know, it's, it's the same old story. When you get beat, what it shows you is you're not at that level. So you have to drop down. Doesn't mean you can't, you're not at that level, full stop. Doesn't mean that you can't bounce back to that level or get to that level. But for now, you're not at that level. Mm. And what Ricky showed tonight is that his performance wasn't at fringe world class. And that's the devastating thing. When you've won world, two world titles at two different weights, you've been involved with 10 world titles, beat some quality fighters, and you lose to a fighter that you should be beating. That's the heartbreaking thing. Mm. Um, Curtis Woodhouse obviously lost his British Great title. Fight, yeah. uh, Willie Lindman become British and Commonwealth champion tonight. But Curtis Woodhouse, talking to me, sounds like that's it. he I could call it a day. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. think so. Listen, he, I mean, he was going to call it a day after the last fight. Um, he got a chance to win the Commonwealth and add that to his belt, uh, add, add that to his cabinet. So I can see why he took the fight, you know, but Lemon's not a big puncher and he hurt Curtis bad tonight. But, I mean, how he got up from that first uppercut, I don't know. But, you know, he's, he, I think we can get him a shot at the uh, European as well and Tyrone Nurse is mandatory and the light weight division is booming. So, um, you know, big fights for Willie Lemon and he sold a hell of a lot of tickets tonight, you know. Um, I will just finish off by asking your opinion on what happened with Sky tonight because they cut out and... Yeah, I don't really know. Apparently someone cut the, the one of the cables. Is that what happened? But that's what I've been told, yeah. So, I've no idea. I haven't looked into it, but I think they lost transmission for 10 or 12, was it? I don't know. 10, yeah. yeah three rounds or something like that. So, obviously, yeah. not great, but again, I'm not Sky. <laughs> Unlike what my Twitter tells me. And my Twitter as well, you, so I can You imagine. absolute fucking... I mean, what have you done here? I mean but uh, apparently one of the fibres was cut uh, and they had to run new cables, so I'll tell you. Hmm. Uh, I just, Scotty Cardle as well. Uh, Boxwell, yeah, tonight. Boxwell, you know, he's 15-0, and 0, good win. Uh, he fights Kirk Goddins now um, on the September the 13th card, which will be in Manchester, which we'll announce soon. And, um, you know, he's ready. He's ready for those big fights, the, the tests that if you lose, the hype's over, so he's got to get his head on. He's done the apprenticeship and he's ready for the big fights, and I'm excited for him. So if you just sum up tonight, you just, it's a disappointing yeah, night for you. Yes, you know, I really... Uh, it's difficult to... When you see someone make sacrifices like Ricky has to improve and to get back what he wants and it doesn't work out, it's a tough, you know, it's, it's the shitty side of the sport when you see a grown man crying and, and devastated because you know how much it meant to him, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really gutted for Ricky, gutted. Mm. Um, and, and you know, like some of the Scottish press says, you know, do you think it's time for him to have a go? I hope he doesn't, because I don't feel like, you know, one, one member of the press said, do you think he's a shot fighter? Not at all, you know, but I just think he's got to learn. He's, someone who's had thought, maybe he'll never learn. You know, at that, you know, but frustrating because I, I feel like 
take the knockdown away. And yeah, he took ships and shots, but he should be beating that guy, and he would be beating that guy. You know, I felt like I wanted it to be 15 rounds because he just started, you know, coming into his own. But again, he's still getting caught with shots, but I felt like it was the last couple of rounds. But I won't stop rambling. So onwards and upwards to, to July the 12th. July the 12th, uh, yeah. Luke Campbell also added to the card. Yeah. So it's Bellew, it's Cleverly, it's Callum Smith, it's Rocky Field, and it's Stephen Smith. It's uh, Anthony Joshua, it's Anthony Agogo, it's Luke Campbell. So um, Rocky Fielding. Rocky Fielding. I said him. Oh, sorry. Maybe maybe no, did. Get me in trouble. Sorry, Rock. Um, big night in Liverpool, and that's the last big show till till the new season. So a lot of planning going on at the moment, and um, you now we'll go away and plan Ricky's future as well. And you know, I hope that he does go back with Tony and and go again because mm. I feel like he didn't do himself justice tonight for for the the work that he's put in, but. I know I've asked you every day this week more or less, but is there anything different on Brookers in date wise? September the 6th is the date they've been given they've given to the IBF. It's what we've been told, but we haven't had a venue yet, so until it is, until I get a concrete venue and date, I'm not gonna say anything because it's oh. like how's Brian King getting on? Interesting, wasn't it? Did you see him in there? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do you know you gave him two VIP tickets? Yeah, that was unintentional, <laughs> by the way. I said give him two seats in the stands and then I saw him in the VIP bar. But anyway, that's, that's a chat for another time. I'm pissed off at the minute. But anyway. All right. At the end, thanks for talking to our Cheers, mate.